Father in heaven, have we gotten what we deserve? We've all sinned against the commandments and have made a farce of true love. You left us to be stewards of the planet, and we've turned into monsters, slave masters to our fellow man, woman, and child. I don't apologize on behalf of my brothers and sisters. We're all guilty of purging each other for selfish desires. We followed corrupt, perverted politicians, becoming perverted and corrupt ourselves in every possible manner. Every last one of us, my lord. We all chanted the songs of Satan and convinced ourselves that filth was good and just. But mankind does not truly know what is good. We do not recognize righteousness. We have been led by the wicked, the evil ones, whose canticles swayed us to become dissolutes. And we have long passed the fringe, beyond the edge. Nec deus intercit nisi dignus vindicae, nodus incirderit. He's not listening to you, Osiris. Neckest out. Emisi Terris Oderis. I am only here to claim my prize. Surely you must know this. I have no need to hate mankind, nor do I have a serious need to intimidate anyone. My fight is with the Creator. You brought this perversion to mankind! Why are you still fighting this, Asylus? The deal has been made. Your fate is sealed. The contract is signed with your blood. We don't need to debate this anymore. Mankind is getting what it deserves because of their reluctance to denounce sin. Humans have made a mockery of the Creator, and you're guilty of this yourself. Men and women insist on inflicting atrocities onto their brothers, sisters, children, and anyone else for their wicked cravings. For their lust, their need of drugs and money, their love of lies and carnal beauty. <laughs> they marched behind the perverted pipers who offered them enslavement, gift wrapped in deplorable politics. <laughs> And for this, the time cannot be any better to hold their feet to the fire. Let me show you something. Come with me. <laughs> you really don't know? This is where the souls of the damn reside. Lake of fire, I presume? Sir? K King Asylus? Help me! Dr. Ezekiel? Oh my god, you're here? I am here, and so is Lord Capone. Lord Capone? No, that, that can't be. It's true. But, Your Majesty, more importantly, are you aware of what's happening? <laughs> aware? He's the one behind it. Sir? Oh. Oh. Tell me what you know, Dr. Ezekiel. Oh. Oh, the destruction of the world, sir. The population of humanity will be severely reduced by the most sinister means. So many souls have arrived here as of late. From our dimension and from other dimensions, too. Sir, 
Only a select few will remain on the earth when it's all said and done. I believe everyone has heard that prophecy, Dr. Ezekiel. No, you don't understand. It isn't exactly how it was written. All right, Doctor. Back into the pool of embers you go. <sighs> no, it isn't easy to hear, but it's true. Look deep in your heart. You are always a good soul with good intentions. Don't let the rot of the world spoil the good part of you. Sir, you're being used. You can still change your course. You're king. You don't have to end the world as a pawn. Aren't we all pawns in the end, Doctor? No. No, it's not true, sir. Use your abilities before it's too late. Sir, listen to me. It's not too late. Sir! New Kingdom Radio Theater. Hey, this is Kate from Ignorance Was Bliss. I have to tell you about getting merch for The Rise of King Asylus. The only place to get merch from the most epic podcast in the world is tpublic.com. Get King Asylus t shirts, coffee mugs, stickers, hoodies, and much more. Go to tpublic.com slash user slash King Asylus and browse their great designs. You'll not only get awesome merch, but you'll also be supporting the show. That's tpublic.com slash user slash King Asylus, or click the link in the show notes. Go online today and place your order. And then beware, because if your family is anything like mine, one of your kids will steal it immediately. of China, Lords Orib and Hemingway, along with two Spartans, continued their climb in search of Lord Shelley. The Spartans were uneasy about strange frequencies coming from the east of their positions. Their focus on the mystery from the east kept them distracted from whatever was to their west. To their surprise, they found themselves face to face with a creature of war. A fabled yeti approached them as they reached the high cliff. It stood very tall with a thick white coat of hair. Lord Henry was the first to spot the creature. His shock left him breathless and nearly paralyzed. Suddenly, the group found themselves in a major fight with a menacing beast. Spot Diaz, let's flank the Yeti from the left. Peter, you and Spot and Jack go around to his right. We'll box him in. Sir, he's picking up some large rocks. Doc, aim for the head! Peter, watch out! Push him over the cliff. His legs are too strong, sir. 
How far does this tunnel go? A little further up. That's what the schematic says. Looks like a dead end up ahead. A dead end? That can't be! The schematic says the tunnel should keep going. Well, maybe an earthquake or something made a cave in. That's very plausible, actually. Well, I guess I should start digging through all this. Ain't no point in trying to figure out what happened. Babe, maybe we should think about this before you start shoveling dirt back this way. I mean, digging through all that just may accomplish pushing debris back towards us. Well, we gotta do something. We can't stay here, and we can't go back. You're right, I'll just- Quiet, please. Listen.
Prince Jacob was responsible for the death of Pope Innocent XIV. This catastrophic event literally plunged the Catholic Church into chaos. With so much infighting, there was no clear leader that emerged, and it seemed the appointment of a new Pope would not happen. For his role in this, the king exiled his son, Prince Jacob, to a remote island in the South Pacific. He was taken by Gabriel, who was more sympathetic to the prince. Gabriel believed the king had simply gone insane, and his actions toward those most loyal to him were clear signs of his irrational tendencies. What is this place? Very nice, remote island in the South Pacific. At least it's tropical. Are there people on the island? I don't think so. If there are, I advise you to stay clear of them. I don't understand. Why would my father send me here? I think this move is more than just punishment. He probably sees you as a threat now. A threat? That's crazy. A threat in what sense? Like, I'm his heir. And all I have done is help him with his mission to save humanity. <sighs> if he's abandoned me here, then there's probably little hope he cares what happens to my son. As far as I know, the Drax still have your son. And it doesn't look like there's going to be any bartering for him anytime soon. They double-crossed your father. <laughs> you should have never trusted them. No! I can't believe my father is that callous. My son has to mean something to him. Tell me, has the world gotten better under your father's rule? Has America become safer or more economically strong or less infected with exotic viruses? Those things were not all his doings. Really? Don't you understand your father is once a member of the very people he swore to destroy? Hasn't it sunk in yet? The game of world dominance is inherent in human nature. Your father was never going to improve the conditions of the world, Jacob. He was never meant to save humanity. He was always meant to play a major role in its destruction. Those wheels were set in motion long before your father ever came near that hellhole of a swamp. The creatures consumed him as soon as he set foot in the DC. That's just a fact. And it's a reality you must come to terms with. To call him callous is quite an understatement. No! No, that's not true! <laughs> Denial. It's the first stage of grief. Look, Jacob, I know you're a good man. I know you want to do good things. You've always had your father's best interests at heart. I admire your loyalty, honestly. But let's be realistic here. You orchestrated the assassination of the Pope. It's not like you're completely innocent of everything. <coughs> okay. Fair enough. So what happens now? You're just going to leave me here? I'll die out here. I'll either starve or be killed by whatever savages live on this island. Let me think. <laughs> it's funny you say you know I'm a good person, but also say I had a hand in the destruction of humanity? That just boggles my mind how someone can say that about a person. I am still human. Are you really? Because humans I know can't live forever. Okay, so I'm not like other humans. <sighs> well, I've got nothing better to do now. So why don't you have a seat on this big rock and explain it all to me? Tell me your story, Gabriel. I'm all ears. So on this side, I keep the most fascinating men and women. 
While they were alive, they caused many deaths, inflicted horrific pain on others, and were just evil in each breath they inhaled. This is like my tank of personal favorites. Not surprised to see Hitler, Stalin, and Napoleon here. Wait, is that Hillary? She was quite the beastly woman in her heyday. <laughs> and she got away with it all. Except down here, she gets to swim with the lava sharks. <laughs> Let's see. Hmm. I don't see the Big Dipper or the Duke. Strange. I'm shocked about that as well. But there's JFK, Prince Andrew, Epstein, Gates, Jobs. Jobs too? How? Why? You really want to know? What about Lord Capone? Dr. Ezekiel said he was down here. But Quinton was in the Grand Castle with me. I assure you he has his own locker down here. So, you won't tell me if my best friend in the world is here. Curious. Okay, what about Lord Jackson? Lord Jackson? No, he's definitely not here. Is he with the others? No, he's not down here at all. What? You mean the creator let him into heaven? No, dimwit. Lord Jackson is not dead yet. He's still on the surface. Lord Jackson is still alive? That's incredible. You'd be surprised who's still alive up there. They just hide with the worms and fungus underground. I can't believe there are so many politicians in this horrid tank of yours. Oh, don't act so surprised, Silas. You know damn well you had to be pretty evil to get up in politics. To be president, they all had to sell their soul to me. Well, one of them didn't, but everyone made sure they made his life a living hell. <laughs> then you came along and put them all to shame. I think I've had enough of this place. I'm going back to the surface if you don't mind. Don't you want to talk to any of your predecessors? I would think you'd be at least a little curious about where they went wrong so you don't make the same mistakes. I don't see the point. No one has ever been in my position. Not like this. Don't be so sure, you arrogant fool. This is not the first time the world has plunged into darkness. And rest assured, it will not be the last time either. You've been listening to The Rise of King Asylus, Episode 63, Exiled, starring J.V. Torres as King Asylus, Steve Fisher as Lord Jeremy Oreb, Adam Higgins as Lord Peter Hemingway, L.A. Bonet as Princess Monica, Madeline Goshorn as Lord Vanessa Banks, Austin Beach as Cody Valentine, Amanda Haggist as J.J., Dominic Nataro as Prince Jacob. Alex Olson as Gabriel. Jeff Ellis as Dr. Ezekiel. Tia Bowen as Spartan Diaz. Chris Robertson as Spartan Jack. And narrated by Sergei Brushnikov. This episode features the song Sanctify by No Hope. Download the music of No Hope on bandcamp.com today. For more information about the cast, the music, or this production, please visit us at theriseofkingasilas.com for a full list on our Season 5 episode page. And now, a word from our podcast friends. It's time to feel the rage. Join us on Film Rage, where we talk movies, current releases, coming attractions, streaming, and classic films as well. Directors and actors, beware as you cannot hide from the rage. My name is Bryce, and I'm part of the Film Rage crew, which also includes Jim. Hey, hey. And Murray. Yo. Why is it that you always talk all the time? I can't understand I why. This, this, voice is this is the Merman, the voice of reason. These two can't agree on anything most of the time. Some movies are Mondo, some are just... Every week, something is going to make us rage. Join us every Wednesday and feel the rage. 
This has been a production of the New Kingdom Radio Theater in Baltimore, Maryland. Copyright 2021. I'm Jan Welch, and stay tuned for Episode 64.